week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Fight fans, fight fans, fight fans. This is Kurt Deville with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Tyson the Gypsy King Fury, Dillian the Body Snatcher White, Jeffrey Benz, and Brick Top himself, Frank Warren. And I just got and received a video by the infamous YB, right? And it was from one of my subs. Shout out to you, Ben for sending this to me. And I was told to look at this video and what I think about it. And it's breaking. Team Tyson Fury confront Dillian White fraudulent lawyer live for scamming nine million from him. And in this video I'm, I'm reading, and it's a long video. It's like 47 minutes. Should have just done a live. <laughs> but in this, he was saying that Dillian White hired the wrong lawyer his lawyer didn't do the right things um nobody does that you know and a lot of the views were similar to the views that i came up with at the beginning until i started digging around more and started backtracking and what i found out was or realized the 30 days that they had to negotiate a deal between Tyson Fury and Dillian White, it didn't work. Okay, that was unsuccessful because they couldn't come to any agreement. That's why arbitration was needed. Okay, and that's what happens when the purse bid came up. Frank Warren won the purse bid. So basically, the deal that they weren't comfortable with or didn't want was still shoved down their throat. So they were forced with an option. Either take the deal that we had that you didn't agree to, that's why we went to purse bid and we won, or you don't fight at all. You, use, you lose the opportunity. Because understand, when they, weren't, they wasn't sure that Dillian White was going to take the fight. That's why the side deals with Usyk was coming out. Andy Ruiz was another option. Remember that as somebody that can fill in Dillian White. Why? Because if Dillian White and his team didn't accept that agreement, that purse bid, okay, and whatever that um, that bout agreement said, that meant he would have lost his opportunity. Okay. That's all that was. So if you were a lawyer, what would you have done? Would you have told Dillian White, hey, let's not take the fight and you wait another thousand days or you possibly would never get it due to the fact that the WBC are a bunch of crooks and we all can agree that they do some shady stuff over there, you know, and then they can sit back and laugh and dictate what goes on in the WBC and something you've been fighting for the longest for? Or do you take the fight as is? They took the fight as, as it was. Um, they were doing further talking in good faith. And obviously, they didn't have any faith because this particular breakdown between Frank Warren and Jeffrey Ben showed that Frank Warren didn't give a shit about what his son texted the lawyer about getting tickets, about the escrow, about... Um, uh, uh, the private jet. None of those things were honored. Okay, none of them. But to say, well, the lawyer did a bad job. No, his advice was you take the fight because that's the only way that the fight's going to take place. And it showed you that Dillian White wanted the fight because he didn't have to take the fight based on what happened. What happened? His promoter, Eddie Hearn, lost. Okay, he lost the purse bid that meant he lost any um, rights to the fight, okay? So what would you expect Jeffrey to do at that point? Just say, no, we're not gonna have the fight. And, and you know, he, nobody's an idiot because without the, the fight purse, 
Nobody really gets paid. <laughs> That's what happened. So it might seem like Frank's like, hey, well, you signed it. You signed that agreement. Well, yeah, you he, he signed. He was forced to sign something that he did not want to sign in that 30 day window anyway. OK, so we have to really look at that, how it was. They couldn't come to the agreement because the agreement stunk in the eyes of Team White. OK, and the WBC um, honored it. OK, and the bout agreement was what it was as is. So he signed it as it was. The other stuff that they wanted, they thought they could get on the back end. Obviously, they could not. And all Frank can say is you signed it, but you signed it, though. He signed it because he had no other choice but to sign it. See, this is different from the Deontay Wilder thing where Shelly Finkel agreed to terms and then turned around and said we didn't agree to terms after saying he agreed to terms. Right? That's the difference. Because Deontay Wilder, then they, they reneged and said they're not going to fight. Now, had Dillian White said, no, nah, I'm not going to do it after you, I've agreed to do it, that's different. No, Dillian White ultimately signed it. That's why he waited all the way up to that point, trying to get the things that he wanted, but didn't get the things that he wanted. Right? And that is that. Anyway, you guys tell me what you think of this particular video. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunched. Peace.